Pollo Campero is big on family values. However, families fight, and the members of this Guatemalan fast food restaurant chain fight dirty. This is the Pollo Campero, where growth and conflict go hand in hand. Food has a way of crossing borders, and the food from Pollo Campero is no exception. People from Guatemala take food from this joint all the way to America for their relatives to eat, but let's pause that for now. Juan Arturo Gutierrez started Pollo Campero in Guatemala in 1971, with the founder relying heavily on generations of family recipes that he had. The restaurant quickly became a favorite among Guatemalans with its flavorful food, which the company boasts that it achieved as a result of using freshest ingredients with the best complementary spices. The company began to expand, and while food played a part in the company's growth, its focus on presenting itself as a family brand helped a lot. The chain uses its family-centric mindset to connect with not only its customers, but its host communities. It would organize local events, raise money for children's research hospital, and so on. Apart from the hunger for profits, the company has another reason for being family-centric. That reason is tied to the chain's origins. What customers now know as Pollo Campero, which translates to country chicken, began in 1920. Juan Batista Gutierrez, a Spaniard from the small Asturias region, left his country for Guatemala. After a couple of years in his new country, Juan bought a mill and chicken farm in 1936. However, it was not until his son, Juan Arturo Gutierrez, came along that the restaurant became what its customers know it as today. While the chain is big on family, it also has a dark secret. Its family would later be stuck in a conflict. And if you like to learn about the history of your favorite eateries, be sure to subscribe for more content like this. The chain dominated Guatemalan markets before getting into Central American countries like Honduras and El Salvador, where it has a cult-like following. Afterward, the restaurant made its way to Mexico, Spain, the British Virgin Islands, Brazil, Puerto Rico, Haiti, Montserrat, and the United States. Speaking of the United States, the chain got there in 2002 with its international headquarters in Lincoln Center. However, in 2016, the company moved its headquarters to Dallas, Texas. In the United States, the chain arrived with much fanfare. There were lines of customers waiting to eat in the Los Angeles unit of the company. It was a Guatemalan brand, so how come people in the United States were eagerly waiting for it? Short answer, migration. Long answer, watch on. When Guatemalans moved to the United States, they craved the familiarity of home. Their cravings were satisfied when family members traveling by air brought them chicken from Pollo Campero. Other times, family members in Guatemala would even buy, freeze, seal, and send the chicken through shipping companies. It wasn't only the people from Guatemala that acted like this. Other folks from Central America also did the same for their relatives in the United States. The chain, sensing an opportunity, opened a branch at El Salvador's Aeropuerto Internacional Monsignor Oscar Arnulfo Romero, so customers could buy there. It also began to make and provide insulated bags specifically for customers. These bags made it easier to transport for air passengers and better contain odors. So with the love it got in the United States, the chain moved, and it got a surprise. Its customers weren't just nostalgic Guatemalans and Central Americans, they had a lot of non-Hispanic customers. In Texas, Pollo Campero became a place to grab lunch. The chain was different. Americans were not new to eating food from other cultures. It was even due to American influence that pizza became as big a meal as it is currently. So menu items like the chain's horchata, which is a sweetened drink made from rice, guava barbecue empanadas, and terramindo ketchup, and fries made from yucca were appreciated. Despite this, the chain added some menu items like chicken burgers. The chain continued to see growth, and in 2016, it recorded 9.1% same-store sales growth. That record marked the chain's 18th consecutive quarter of comparable sales growth. Due to this growth, the chain began to work on massively expanding in the United States, even ultimately planning over 300 locations. In the U.S., we're planning to double the units in the next three years, so we're setting out the pipeline we need to handle that type of growth. The chain, which had 66 units, only mentioned plans for expansion, but it wasn't as upfront as it was with the number of people it would hire, and you'll soon see why. Remember how the chain preaches family? Well, it forgot its own philosophy when the founder sued the company. 
The founder claimed the president of Campero USA Corp. and Campero Inc., Juan Jose Gutierrez, has perpetuated fraud and illegally transferred assets that would make suing for restoration difficult. The founder claimed that the parties involved have been mismanaging the company's funds since they had been in Guatemala. Despite the lawsuit, the chain continued to grow, and in 2021, it recorded impressive profits and had 82 units in the United States. While the business did fine that year, it fell projection around 45 units short of the number of units it thought it would open by the year. But with a profit of $1.9 million in 2021, we are sure the chain doesn't mind. What's even more surprising? The chain's success came at a time when businesses were losing to COVID-19. The company showed how smart it was with its planning. According to Pollo Campero, it had done a forecast of its operations and identified where it would have problems with supplies. Knowing this, the business stayed on top by having a great relationship with its suppliers, which ensured that when other restaurants lacked ingredients, the business had an abundance of them. As profitable as the chain has been, it runs on fewer staff than its competitors. The chain claims it has been able to do this by making its kitchen more efficient. The company also revealed that it had automated some of its operations, but claimed it doesn't affect the quality of its products. As much as the company claims that having less staff doesn't affect its operations, some customers have revealed otherwise. They said the company had slow service with some customers, revealing the chain has severely dirty tables and seats due to customers being more than the staff attending to them. You would think the chain is trying to keep costs down by reducing labor. However, the reverse happened. Despite its attitude towards labor, the chain's food became more expensive. The company claimed this happened because it was trying to prevent having a supply issue at the time. Pollo Campero came from Guatemala, and it received a lot of love when it arrived in the United States. However, it ran into conflict when the founder and the leadership of the company clashed. This didn't affect the company's fortunes as it continued to grow, and it even had an impressive 2021. When it comes to its ambition of having over 300 restaurants in the United States, the business is still way off. Do you think it'll be able to achieve that number of restaurants or has the business peaked? Let us know in the comments and don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to support our channel.